everyone, my name is Cyprian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make the Logan beanie. It can be made in a multiple of sizes and I'll leave all the information for that below. But for today, I'm going to be demonstrating the toddler size. So that would typically fit a one to three year old. Everything you need today, I will put up on the screen here. But to get started, you just need some worsted weight cotton yarn. This can be made in acrylic as well, but I especially love it in cotton because of its open weave. It's perfect for a spring or summer hat and a six millimeter hook. So you will need to know the basic stitches to follow along with me today. So gather up everything you need today and we'll get started. So today I'm going to be using this recycled cotton by Loops and Threads, but of course you can use any cotton you like. I just really loved this color. The color is called uh, pastel blue, but it's more like a, like a soft aqua color, but I thought that would be really pretty for the springtime and kind of reminds me of Easter a little bit. Okay, so as always, the first thing that we're going to do is make a slip knot. And then I always do the chain two method, but of course, if you're used to starting your hats another way using the magic circle or another method, feel free to do that. So we're just going to chain two and then working into the second chain from the hook, we're going to place eight single crochet. So for the design or um, the texture on this hat, you need a multiple of four. So we're going to start off with eight. So one, Two. I'm just going to work ahead here and I'll fast forward and meet up with you after we've done the eight stitches. Okay, so for round two, we're going to be doubling our stitches. So we're going to work two single crochet into each stitch around. So just go under those two loops and work two single crochet in the same stitch. This hat is going to be worked in continuous rounds as long as we are increasing. So you may want to use a stitch marker to mark that beginning stitch. So go ahead and place two single crochet in each stitch around and then we'll meet up and you should have 16 stitches at the end of round two. Okay, so at the end of round two, you should have 16 single crochets. Moving on to round three, all we're going to be doing is placing one single crochet followed by two single crochet in the next. And you're going to be doing that for the entire round. So you can go ahead and just put my stitch marker back in, place one single crochet. Oops, it's fraying a little bit. That's one of my biggest pet peeves about cotton yarn. So one single crochet followed by two single crochet. So work that stitch pattern all the way around and you should have 24 stitches at the end of round three. And then we'll meet up and continue on with round four. Okay, so I just completed round three and I have 24 stitches. Moving on to round four, we're gonna be working a single crochet into the first two stitches my stitch marker back in, followed by two single crochet in the next. And we're going to work that same pattern all the way around. So two single crochets, sorry, one, or single crochet in two stitches, that's two, followed by two single crochet in the next. And at the end of round four, you should have 32 stitches. So I'll go ahead and work my round and meet up with you for round five. Okay, so I am at the end of round four and I've double checked that I have 32 stitches. So we can move on to round five and it's gonna be worked the same way. Except for this time, we're gonna be working a single crochet in the first three stitches. So that's one, two, and three, and I'm just going to slip my stitch marker in before I forget. And then two single crochet in the next. And we'll repeat that pattern for the entire round. So at the end of round four, sorry, at the end of round five, you should have 40 stitches. So work a single crochet in the first or the next three. That's two and three. 
followed by two single crochet in the next. So I'll go ahead off camera, finish this round, and we'll meet up at the end of round five and do our count, make sure that we have 40 stitches. Okay, I finished round five and I've double checked and I have 40 stitches. So we have two more increase rounds before we start on the texture. So for round six, we're gonna work a single crochet into the first four stitches. It's one, two, three, and four. It's a little hard to see my stitch there because I've got some yarn fraying and it's super tight. Okay, Ugh, I still frayed my yarn. My gosh. Okay, that's going to be a pain to work into, but I'm going to keep going. And then work two single crochet into the next. I'll slip my stitch marker back in so I don't lose my spot. And then do a single crochet in the next four followed by two single crochet in the next. So you're gonna work that pattern all the way around for round six, and at the end of round six, you should have 48 stitches. So again, I'll go off camera and finish that up, and we'll, and, uh, we'll meet up for round seven, which will be our last increase round. Okay, I just finished round six and I double checked, we have 48 stitches. So at this point, you may wanna just check and make sure that your hat is measuring about the same as mine, which is about four inches across. That means that you are on track for your gauge. Now for the next round, we're not gonna be increasing the same way. We're gonna do uh, an increase of only four stitches for this round because the gauge on this hat is roughly four stitches to every inch. So each time we do a round, we're increasing the size of the hat by approximately two inches, and we wanna only increase it by one inch. So for round seven, we're just gonna be working a single crochet in the first eight stitches. So that's one, two, put my stitch marker back in. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you're gonna work two single crochet in the next. So one and two. Then keep doing that all the right way around. So single crochet in the next eight stitches. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then two single crochet in the next. So just continue that way for the rest of round seven. And at the end of round seven, you'll have 52 stitches, which is an increase of four. Just jumping in here to let you know that you'll be ending round seven with three single crochets in the last stitches, okay? Um, and then we'll move on to round eight and we'll start into the texture. Okay, so I'll meet up with you soon. Okay, so I finished round seven. I have 52 stitches. My last increase was done four stitches before the end of the round, so I completed the round by working three single crochet in the remaining. Okay, so for the next round, we're not gonna join, but we're just gonna start right in to round eight. So we're gonna be working a double crochet into that first single crochet. And then I'm just gonna slip my stitch marker back in and then we are going to be working a cluster and I'll show you how to do those. So it's like starting with a double crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and through the two loops, yarn over again, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over through two. And then to finish off the cluster, you're gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Chain one. 
Now working back into that same stitch and then do another cluster and I'll show you that again. So you're going to do a yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook. Yarn over, oops, I wasn't holding that tightly enough. Yarn over through two loops and then you're going to do the same thing again. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. You've got four now but you're just going to be pulling it through two. So yarn over, pull through two to finish that cluster. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And then you are going to be skipping the next single crochet, working a double crochet in the following one. So skip, double crochet. Okay. Now you're going to be skipping the next stitch after that double crochet and you're going to be working a cluster again. So skip, cluster, so yarn over, insert your hook, draw up a loop, yarn over through two loops, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, you've got four, yarn over, two through two, yarn over and complete the cluster by working through all three loops. Then you're going to chain one and you're going to make another cluster. So inserting your hook, pulling it through two loops, yarn over, insert, pull up a loop through two, and then finish it by working through all three. Once you finish that cluster, you're going to skip the next single crochet, double crochet in the one after, and skipping the next and then starting with those clusters again. So I'll leave a timestamp below so that you can follow along if you need help with the clusters. But that is your stitches for this entire round. So you're going to be working cluster, chain one, cluster in one stitch and then double crocheting after you skip a stitch. Okay, so I will also put written instructions on the video. That's a little bit hard to remember. So just go ahead and finish working round eight and at the end you should still have 52 stitches. Okay, so remember I'm putting timestamps below and check out the instructions above. Okay, so I have just finished round eight and I have a total of 52 stitches. So how you count the stitches is every time you closed a cluster, we did it with one stitch. So each cluster is one stitch. And then of course your double crochet. So you'll just go around and count these stitches as you normally would. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So you just wanna double check you've got 52 stitches. Now moving on to round nine, we are going to be joining and turning now at every round. So at the top of the double crochet here, just join that with a slip stitch. And then you're gonna chain three, one, two, three, and turn your work. Okay, so we wanna locate our first double crochet here and we're going to be doing a back post double crochet. So for those who don't know how to do that, you're going to yarn over. It's like you're doing a double crochet except we're going to be ins inserting the hook from back to front and around that post and then we're going to drop a loop so that we've got three loops on our hook. Yarn over through two, yarn over through two. So that's your first back post double crochet. Now we're going to be working the same cluster pattern as we did here except for this time we're going to be working it into this chain one space. So you remember how to do the clusters. So we'll go ahead and do those. Make one cluster here. Followed by a chain stitch again. Followed by another cluster. I'm sure you're used to doing those clusters by now. 
Okay, and then we're gonna locate our next double crochet. And again, we're gonna be working a back post double crochet. So yarn over, insert your hook from back to front, around the post, yarn over, and try not to pull your work too tight or this is gonna be difficult to work. Um, so you're just gonna pull that through, pull your stitches up, yarn over, and then finish your double crochet. Find your next chain one space and work that cluster pattern as we did before, yarn over. Go ahead and work these. Okay. And then locate your next double crochet and we're gonna do another back post double crochet. Okay, and this is the pattern for this entire round. Okay, so you're just gonna continue to work in those chain one spaces, locate your double crochets, and work back post double crochet around those. So I'll meet up with you at the end of this round, and again, you should be finishing this round with 52 stitches. Okay, so I'm at the end of round nine, you should have 52 stitches, and we're just gonna join to the very top of that first double crochet with a slip stitch. We're gonna chain three and turn. Then we're gonna go back and work into, or work this double crochet here, except for this time, we're gonna be working a front post double crochet. So you'll be switching back and forth with each round. So to work a front post double crochet, we're gonna insert the hook from front to back around the post, yarn over, and finish that double crochet. Then you're gonna to continue to work the clusters in the chain one stitches as we did the round before. Chain one, and work another cluster. And then you find the next double crochet and work a front post double crochet around that one. So insert from front to back around the post, yarn over and finish that double crochet. So that is how you're gonna be working for this round as well. Now that is pretty much the pattern repeat. Um, I will post above, so that is the same pattern repeat for the rest of the hat. You're gonna be doing that till you have done 16 rounds. So I'll post above here the instructions, but you're gonna be alternating between round nine and 10 until you reach 16 rounds in total. And then we'll meet up and do the scalloped edge together and you will need a 5.5 millimeter hook to finish off the hat and bring it in for a nice tight fit. If you're adding ribbon to the hat, then you don't necessarily need the smaller hook because you can achieve that by using the ribbon and tying a bow. So uh, I'll meet up with you at the end of round 16. Okay, so I finished round 16 and this is where we're gonna switch to um, I couldn't find my 5.5, so I'm gonna use a five millimeter hook and just crochet loosely. Um, and we're gonna work on the scalloped edge. So you're just gonna join again to the first stitch with a slip stitch. And then for this round, we're gonna be working into the chain one spaces. And all we're gonna be doing is working five half double crochets in there. Two. Three, four, and five. And then we're gonna slip stitch into this stitch here. And we're gonna skip the first stitch or the next stitch and work into that chain one space. So all you're gonna be doing for this round is working five half double crochets in the chain one space slip stitching in the next. Hang on, let me just finish my five. Five. 
and then slip stitch into this one and that is going to be your entire round and that will give you this really pretty edging. Once you're at the end of the round, you're just going to join with a slip stitch and fasten off and just weave in those ends. From there you can embellish it with a flower or a ribbon or a bow or anything you want, but it's such a beautiful open weave for the spring and the summer. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out these videos next. And until next time, bye-bye.